Good afternoon, folks. We're going to do something different. Well, not different, but at the same time. We are going to build another treaty battleship, but this time we're going to do what Dr. Alexander Clark called the machine gun battleship. Normal battleships tend to have fewer but large guns. Um, we're talking by World War II, we were seeing 18-inch guns. Well, actually, we were seeing 18-inch guns in World War I. That ended there because of the treaties. But that's another point. The point is that the idea of a machine gun battleship is fewer small guns, but a lot of them. So the question is, exactly how many guns can we fit on this baby? So I've already gone in here and I looked. The best option for a hull, because we need the length to fit as many turrets as possible is the uh, modernized battle cruiser. So that's what we're going to use. And we will change the name to if it works here. Machine gun battleship. Now, again, treaty displacement. We don't need that speed. 39 knots? Uh, yeah. Uh, quite frankly, we can get by probably with 28. And the reason I'm saying 28 knots, very few ships were faster than that. About the only ones were the two, well, okay, the German battleships, the Italian battleships, and the Japanese ones were technically but it wasn't usable speed for most of the time. Yes, you could do 32 knots if the sea was still. Uh, so adopting a 28 knot limit made a lot of sense. You didn't need to put as much power in, which meant that your engine rooms needed could be smaller, which meant more space for guns, the whole works. Okay, range, 9,200, that's good. Bulk hits maximum. Again, this is a ship that is gonna take a pounding. So. We want the maximum possible bulkheads on it. Also, because we're not actually using it as a battle cruiser, we don't care about speed, we're going to maximize the beam. Maximizing the beam gives us a little bit of extra protection. Uh, we're also, uh, we're, no, we're, no, we're not going to mess with the drop. That doesn't make sense. It's a battleship, so we can assume that they're not going to assign a green crew. Um, it's built by a nation which has a large maritime empire. Crew quarters need to be reasonably good. Now, this is where it gets into real fun. I have to sit back here and start from the back end because what we need to do is we need to determine what exactly we can fit in. See, there's super firing barbet average, right? There's also just a second. Extra tall superimposed bar bat. Huge superimposed bar bat. Enormous superimposed bar bat. Okay, what we need is very tall superimposed bar bat. Probably. Just a second. I think that would work here. Now, I'm also putting one here. Now comes the fun part. We gotta start playing with which guns are we gonna use. The problem is that if you go too small, it's gonna bounce off armor. If you don't go, if you go too large, it slows down your reload cycle. Notice on the nine inch guns, it's showing the reload cycle of 13 seconds. On a 10 inch, the reload time moves up to 25.6 seconds. On 11 inch, the time goes up to 34.6 seconds. By the time we get up to a 17 inch, we're up to a reload time of 101.6 seconds. So you want the maximum speed possible on reloading, but you want to be heavy enough to actually cause damage. But at the same time, most of the hits on ships 
actually damage superstructure. So maybe we could buy with really light guns. Hey, we could try that. What if we put in 9-inch guns and we put in, oh, they only allow me 3 barrels. Let's go back to 11-inch guns. 3 barrels. What is this? 14-inch guns. That allows 4 barrels. 13-inch guns, 3 barrels. Huh. Okay. Well... No, it's not going to fit. I know it's not going to fit. Let's go back here. I'm going to use the lightest gun possible. Okay, we're going to have to change the layout here. What I need to do is put the gun as far forward as possible. As far aft as possible. Okay, lower bet. Now, that was very tall superimposed bar bet two. Right here. Very tall superimposed bar bet two. Go back to guns. Okay, I gotta love this. You know, sometimes it just will not, ref it just refuses to admit that there's a mount there. Ah, uh, annoying. Okay, let's go in here. We need to put on the main tower because it's yelling at us for not having installed it. Now, we need a funnel. And we need the best funnel we can get for engine efficiency. And I tend to overdo it on the funnels, I'll admit, but there's a reason for that, and that is that it's not possible to... If you have an oversized funnel and your ship takes damage, you have the extra draft for your engines to continue to run at full power, if you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, let's see. We've got four weight offset of 12.8%. That's not too big of a deal right now. What we need to do is we need to go into components because currently it's on semi-oil fuel. It would be on the best. And this basically is what the uh, British were using at this point in time. Geared turbines too. They had auxiliaries. The shafts were generally good, but they may not have been quite top end. Steering, however, tended to be very good. Again, a lot of this depends on what the British were doing at the time, which tended to be they wanted a ship that was maneuverable and reliable, tended to be reliable, but they also wanted quick. So sometimes they went the reliable route, and sometimes they went the quick route. Now, I'm going to assume that it's got the very, very best. Um, of everything, again, because it's, well, now we know the British had some of the best anti-tort production in the business, we know they used triple hulls, okay, it's a battleship, you want heavily reinforced bulkheads, you want at least anti-flood two, and we'll give it Sindel three. Now, scroll up here, oh, this is always fun. Nope, we're not changing that. We're not changing that. Generally, column capitalistic is what people tended to use a lot. Okay. Now. Standard shell size. I want to put a super heavy shell in those guns. 
because they are small guns. I want an increased ammo load because it's a machine gun battleship. I want the maximum amount of ammunition possible. Propellant. We'll put it with the newest top-end propellant. Top-end bursting charges. We'll give it full electrohydramic turn it so they swing real quick. After all, what good's a machine gun battleship if you can't move your turrets quick? Semi-automated loading. Stereoscopic rangefinder. Now, acoustics, they wouldn't go any further than hydrophone. You'd want to know that a submarine's there. This is not designed for hunting submarines. Top radio frequency. The British had the best radar in the business in World War II. Now, that takes care of all of that. We have to go on to the other stuff down here. Or actually, we want to go back to the main guns for a sec, because some ships have an option for side guns. So let's see if we can fit a side turret on this ship. Ooh. You know, we could, kind of. Okay, let's change that rear tower. Main guns, side guns, nine inch, triples. Okay. And yes, I know this is just a little bit insane. It's supposed to be. It's a machine gun battleship. That's the whole idea of the machine gun battleship is to be insane. Or at least as insane as possible. Okay, so I can't fit any more nine inches there, but we can go we have to fit the secondaries. Now, the British used two different sizes of Secondary. Well, I actually used several sizes of secondary during this time period. They used 5.25s and 4.5s mostly. Now, I like the 5.25. It's a great gun, but in a lot of ways, the 4.5 was a better choice because, again, this is a machine gun battleship. We aren't worried about total hits. We're worried about volume of fire. We want to get as much fire downrange as possible, as quick as possible. And that includes anti-aircraft fire. And this happens to be a size of gun that is perfect for anti-aircraft work. And was used heavily for anti-aircraft work. And yes, they actually did toss this many turrets on these ships, you know, not at the start of World War II, but by the end, they were tossing turrets on every bit of open real estate. It literally got insane. Now, note that it says some guns have a poor sector of fire. I don't care about this. The idea isn't to have a perfect sector of fire. The idea is to have a crap ton of shit guns. Now, we're going to see if we can stick any 3-inch guns in because, well, what the heck. They also used 3-inch for AA. It was a great little gun for what it was used for. Ooh, I could have some real fun back here. I never even noticed that. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, I guess that's pretty well my limit on uh, guns. Now, this ship is designed to get close. How close? <laughs> Machine gun battleship? Oh, heck, I just realized something. When I changed that, it changed the displacement. Okay, there we are. 
and it had to recalculate the fuel, the uh, power as well. So, what we want to do is we want to bang up the main belt. We don't really care about the floor belt and the aft belt, but the main belt we care about. We also care about the turret armor, specifically barbette, which is one thing I just noticed is really weak. That has got to be maxed out. Um, the larger guns have barbed armor far thicker than this. Since this is going to be designed to fight against the biggest guns on the planet, it needs the best protection on its barbettes. We can't take a chance on losing uh, the ship to a uh, uncontrolled magazine explosion. That would be just a little bit embarrassing. Ella Jutland. Hello, Admiral Beatty. What the hell are you thinking of? And, you know, for those who are wondering, uh, during the Battle of Jutland, the, the battle cruiser fleet had been practicing high-speed gunnery, and that was their entire aim, to get as much in the way of firepower downstream as possible. And to do this, they took the safeties off the turrets. And as a result, when the turrets got hit, there wasn't anything to stop the explosion from going straight down to the bottom of the ship and hitting the magazine. So the ship goes up like a Roman candle. And um, that all came down to bad handling practices. If they hadn't have been drilled to get stuff down there as fast as possible and to heck with safety, it wouldn't have been a problem. When you have a culture that says safety doesn't matter, well, guess what? Bad things happen. Really bad things. Okay, we're up to 11.4. I wonder how much further we can go on this. 12. Okay, that looks like the maximum. Now, note we still got reasonable amounts of weight left, but we want to finish off the turret armor. Okay, my turret armor is now maxed out. Sindel armor. Now, I'm not going to mess with Sindel armor. What I am going to do, however, as I said, was bang up the main belt. Oh, right. And reduce the floor belt just a bit. And bump the aft belt just a bit. And we're still just a little bit too heavy on the nose. Got to get the bow up. Sheesh. I really did put a little bit too much on the bow, didn't I? Ah, uh, well. I guess we're not going to have to worry too much about the aft belt or the aft deck getting uh, penetrated too easily. Okay, um, my personal preference is for slightly marginal aft weight offset. Other people in UAD might disagree, but that's what I found works. Now, we're not going to worry too much about deck armor for the simple reason that the aim of this ship is to get as close as possible, as fast as possible. Which reminds me, since I did that, I really should bang the speed back up to 32. So we can get there fast. And we can drop the range down to about here. We don't need that much range. I'm sorry, cutting the range gives me a little bit of extra. Um, means I don't, my fuel tank shrink a bit. So let's go back here again. Okay, main belt. Lots more main belt. I wonder how thick I can make it. 
Oh, yeah, now we're getting better. Yeah, I like this. You know, I'm going to be able to put a lot of armor on this ship. Let's see, we're up to 18 inches. Yes, on the main belt. Oh, let's go to 20. Yeah, let's go to 20. 20 inches on the main belt. That sounds like it'll be a cracker. Okay. Now, I have some extra weight left. Where do I put it? You know what? We're going to bang up the superstructure. There's one thing I found in this game. It's superstructure hits have this nasty tendency to take out your admiral. Which is really embarrassing and it tends your ship to make your ship function like it's useless. I wonder if I can get one more honor. Oop, not quite. Okay. So, we have the machine gun battleship. Mark 1. I have no idea how this is going to actually function in battle. But that is one of the things we are going to test next. Now, for those of you who missed all the other streams because for some reason Twitch wasn't working properly, I am intending to upload every single design to my Patreon account, which will be shown in the Twitch About Me page. Um, they, you can download them for free, play with them as much as you want. I hope you have a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun working on some of these designs. Um, I'm going to be putting notes in with each design, you know, they're getting it in a zip file explaining why I made the design choices I did, so that you can go through, look at it, and say, okay, what would I have done? How could I have done this better? Or worse? Want me to find out, huh? Anyway, have fun, folks, and stay safe.